Hello, my dearest darling cherubs. I got dressed up for our conversation today. So uh, today we're going to talk about the act of comparing and contrasting. So, so far you've written two literary essays. One was a character analysis where you made a claim about a character. For example, the third little pig in the three little pigs is an admirable character, or Squeaky is an arrogant character. Then you moved on to a thematic essay where you, where you argued that a certain life lesson is taught from a text. For example, you might say the theme of the short story the Marble Champ by Gary Soto is that hard work brings joy, for example, something like that. Now, the third style of literary essay we're going to be focusing on next is a comparison and contrast piece. So we want to practice the art of comparing and contrasting. And down here I have a quote from the great Mrs. Han. It's not actually from Mrs. Han because she'd be really disgusted if she knew that I claimed that she said this. But here's what it says. Compared to the other subjects, language arts is the best. In contrast to the other subjects, language arts allows us to make words our primary area of focus. Now, although Mrs. Hahn would never say this, I wanted to show you an example of what it means to compare and contrast. So when we compare things, we're looking for what they have in common, what they have that makes them similar. And when we contrast, we're looking for what makes things different. Think about pros and cons. The word contrast has con in it. It's things that are different, things that don't go. Now, let's take a look at some actual examples here. So this is a former student from the middle school. He is now a senior in high school. His name is Brian. And when I was a uh, first year, second year teacher, I met Brian and was amused because I felt like Brian and I actually look a lot alike. He almost looks like he could be my child or my seventh grade self. And so I thought we could start by comparing and contrasting the two of us here. So the first obvious contrast between us is our gender. I'm female, whereas Brian is male. Another contrast would be our age. I am old, er, and Brian is younger. Um, in terms of other contrasts, we might say, for example, I have long hair, but Brian has short hair. But then let's think about comparisons, things we have in common. One thing I see right away that we have in common is that we both have beautiful blue eyes. So that's one comparison I could make between us. Another is that we're both wearing hats in this picture. And another is that we are both pretty happy people based on this photo. So I'm looking for things that we have in common and things that we have that are different. Another example that you've probably heard before is just apples and oranges. People will say, oh, that's apples and oranges, meaning those are two very different things. But the truth is apples and oranges have some things in common. For example, they're both fruits. Um, they both have a peel of some kind. Um, they're both delicious, arguably. But in terms of differences, you could say an orange is more rounded, while an apple is more um, uniquely shaped. You could say an orange is orange, while an apple is typically red or green. So starting to see kind of how we compare and contrast things. This is probably something that's pretty basic to you. So when we're writing as compare and contrast writers, we are often going to be looking for certain transitional phrases that show us that we're comparing and contrasting. So this is a paragraph about my sister Julie and me. And um, we're going to read it real quick. So you take a second. I'll read it out loud. You can follow along. And then we're going to look for what phrases in this paragraph show us that we're looking at a comparison, something we have in common, or that we're looking at a contrast, something that makes us different. Because you want to be using those phrases in your own writing to show, oh, these are two different things. These are similar things. So here's the paragraph. My sister Julie and I were both born in December, but I was born in 1985 and Julie was born in 1987. Julie is a nurse while I am a teacher. We both love to care for others. However, Julie is much better at medical care, while I prefer to provide care through education. Julie loves to go out to new restaurants and try new foods. Similarly, I like exploring cool food experiences in Philadelphia. Although Julie and I both love going out to restaurants, she goes out more often than I do because I am more frugal than she is. Whereas I would only buy food that is on sale, Julie is willing to pay full price for something if she thinks it's the best quality. The most important commonality we share is that we love our family and we love each other. Now, 
take a minute. You might even want to pause the video and see if you can see how many how many particular phrases or words you can find that signal to you that we are comparing or contrasting. Take a minute. Maybe pause it. I'm assuming you're pausing right now. Okay, you unpaused, welcome back. So let's take a look and see if we can find some of these comparison and contrast signal phrases. So the first one I see is right here, the word both. When I see the word both, that suggests to me that we're probably looking at something we have in common. We're both born in December. Now, then you see a word like but, and but is typically a word we use to show contrast. I would go to the party, but I'm grounded. So you're kind of showing that, you know, something's not going with something else. A next example is the word while. Julie is a nurse, while I am a teacher. While and but are kind of similar. You can sort of use them interchangeably in a lot of cases. In fact, I could switch the order of these two right here and it wouldn't make a difference. Then we have the word both again. We both love to care for others. That's definitely a word we use to show that we have something in common. Then we have however. This is a word for contrast. I like to care for people in one way. Julie prefers a different. So another example of contrast words is while. However, Julie is much better at medical care, while I prefer to provide care through education. So those words show that something is different between us. Then we have the word similarly. Similarity, you see the word similarity in there. So similarly means something we also share. But then we have although, which is a word showing differences. Although Julie and I both love going to do this, she does it in a different way than me. So although is used for contrast. Another word for contrast is the word whereas. That might be a new one for you. But we use whereas, which basically in the same way that we would use although. In fact, I could switch although and whereas in these sentences and they would both work. Then we have the word commonality. And you see the word common in there. So it's showing something we have in common. So these are all little signal phrases. And when you're writing your compare and contrast pieces, you're gonna to wanna to be paying attention to how many of these signal phrases do you have to show your reader what the two items you're comparing have in common and what makes them different. So here's a list of some common compare and contrast signal words. So you'll see we've got these traditional expressions or transitional expressions used to compare. And then we have transitional expressions used in contrast. This is not a total list. There are other words you could use that aren't on this list, but this is a good starting point. So if you're not sure and you need help coming up with a word, just look up compare and contrast signal words or go back to this presentation and you'll be able to come up with some options. Now, when we're trying to visualize what things have in common and what things are, diff what things are uh, different between two items or two people, you can use a couple different methods. Over here on the left, we have the Venn diagram, which you've probably seen before, which is where you have two overlapping circles. And in section A, you would write all the things that are specific to item A. In section B, you'd write all the things that are specific to item B. And then in the middle, in that overlapping portion, you would fill in things that they have in common. So if I was talking about my sister and me over if I was part person A, I might put on per side A, I'd put a teacher, and on side B, I'd put a nurse, and then in the middle, I'd put like to help people, because we like to help people, but we do it in different ways. Another example is that T chart in the center where you make a list of all the things about one item or one character, one person, and then all the items about another character, person, item. Now, the one on the right is kind of my favorite. I just think it's kind of cool. So you think about two items, and then you like, you come up with specific traits to compare. So if you look at that bottom right-hand corner of the screen, it says some different traits we might think about when comparing apples and oranges. We might think about the skin. We might think about the color. You might think about the meat, which is basically just like the part that you eat. And we might think about where you would grow the product. And then you would write on one side the things they have in common, and in one th on the other side, the things that they have that are different. So you're actually gonna be doing something like this yourself. So I'm gonna show you how that would go now. So your assignment is going to be to look at a list kind of like this, and you're gonna compare and contrast two things. So let me walk you through this first one. Let me think about two things I might compare. Now, something I love to eat, some of you have seen me eating it in my classroom, is peanut butter. I love peanut butter. And there are some very different varieties of peanut butter out there, and I think some are way better than others. So let's compare the natural honey roasted peanut butter from Whole Foods. I should write out peanut butter. And then we'll say versus Jif creamy peanut butter which is your basic grocery store peanut butter and jelly sandwich peanut butter. So 
let's think about some traits. Traits are qualities or characteristics that we can compare. So one thing I'd want to think about with these two peanut butters is the texture. That's one trait I would compare. Another I might compare would be sweetness. Is one of them sweeter than the other? Or maybe saltiness too. Sweetness slash saltiness. Um, let's see, I could also do cost because they definitely do not cost the same amount. Um, I could compare their, hmm, what else could I compare? I could compare their, um, hmm, ease of purchase slash availability. Because if one of these peanut butters is only available at Whole Foods, that's very different than being able to get it anywhere. So this is a pretty good list of traits here. Let's think about these four to start with. So if I'm thinking about similarities between these two peanut butters in texture, um, I would say both are thick and... Hmm. I guess both are thick. I can't really think of much else that they have in common because they're really pretty different texture-wise. So in terms of differences, I might put, um, I'm going to call it WF for Whole Foods. Whole Foods peanut butter is crunchy and more textured, whereas Jif peanut butter is smoother and slicker, which is a gross word, but I actually think it's pretty accurate. It's just, it definitely is like slicker. It's like, it feels like you could like slide your knife across it. Ugh. Then let's think about sweetness and saltiness. So in similarities, I could say um, both are a combo of sweet and salty. But over here, I would probably say something like Jif peanut butter is a little sweeter than Whole Foods peanut butter. It's actually a little saltier too. Now if I'm thinking about cost, similarities I would say both are in the three to five dollar range generally. But if I looked at it by like the unit price, it would definitely cost more for the Whole Foods peanut butter. So I'll say Whole Foods peanut butter is more expensive in the end. Um, now let's see, ease of purchase. So in terms of similarities, um, there's not really much. They're more different because one, you can buy like, let's see, GIF available at most grocery stores and drug stores. Whole Foods, peanut butter, only at Whole Foods. <laughs> so apparently I'm quite the snob because I like my Whole Foods peanut butter. So based on this little organizer, I could go ahead and I could write a whole paragraph in which I compare these two different products. So your assignment is going to be to do two similar organizers like this. So the first one you're gonna do is you're gonna compare two of your teachers. You can choose me for one of them if you'd like, you don't have to. And then you're gonna choose another teacher at our middle school. So you could compare Mr. Skronik and Mr. Schmidt, or you could compare Miss Whitman and Miss Tosh. And you're gonna look at a few different traits. And for this organizer, I gave you some ideas. So I wrote down things like strictness, who is stricter, who is not, um, appearance, what do we look like, how do we dress, uh, personality, areas of expertise. So if you're comparing Mr. Schmidt and me, you'd probably put differences. You'd put Mr. Schmidt is an expert in math, whereas Miss Whitman is an expert in language arts. And then I want you to think of two different traits, two other ones that we haven't thought of that you could compare. Now for the last organizer, you're going to think of two things that are completely up to you. So you could compare two other food items, you could compare um, two brands of ice cream, you could compare two people, two literary characters, two superheroes. And you're going to come up with a list of traits and you're going to come up with the similarities and differences between them. So basically this is some good practice for us in comparing and contrasting. Now after you fill out these organizers, your task is going to be to choose either the comparison between the two teachers or the comparison that you chose down here. And you're going to write a paragraph comparing and contrasting the item that you chose. So you're only going to write one paragraph, not two. So either choose to compare and contrast the two teachers and write a paragraph where you basically take all the things that you wrote in this organizer and put it into paragraph form. 
just like in the example that I showed you about my sister and me. Or you can choose the two items you compared down here. Maybe you compared Batman and Superman. So you could write a paragraph in which you explain the comparisons, the similarities and differences between Batman and Superman. So that is your work for today. I hope it makes sense. If you have any questions, uh, just let me know. I'm happy to help. And uh, I think you're awesome. And I can't wait to see what you come up with. All right. Woohoo!